so glass. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you wanted to join me today because today we are going to be talking about glass. I recently started a series, like a little mini series, where I talk about some of the different materials that are out there and what their impact actually is and how they hold up to plastic and generally what is the best to buy or to use. And the first part of this series was the aluminium one and you guys really seem to like that. But half the comments on that video is just people saying that they also want one with glass. So um, I'm hearing you and this is what we're going to do now. I feel like glass is also an important material to talk about because a lot of the zero waste movement, a lot of the sustainability movement in general are very focused on glass and we tend to favor it a lot. Like I have a lot of glass and um, there is of course an impact to glass and I think there are actually some very detrimental things about glass that we all ought to know. So I'm so excited to be diving into this issue today and I hope you will be joining me as well. But before we do that I can actually see that many people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. So if you are awesome and amazing then hit that subscribe button and make my day and also then you can keep yourself posted on all this information. So let's get to it. Wow that was shameless self-promoting. So glass. Glass is a material that we use or most people use every single day. We use it for a lot of different purposes and we also use it as a disposable product. So before we get into the overall issue with glass let's talk a little bit about how it's actually produced. Glass is made from sand, but not every type of sand. Glass is specifically made from a type of sand called silica. And silica is often extracted from nature, from either riverbeds or from seabeds. We already run into a problem when it comes to extracting raw materials from the planet, because the earth simply cannot replace the sand that we're taking away so fast. So as a result of extracting silica from seabeds and riverbeds, we risk flooding in certain areas. It also disrupts the food chains and generally the ecosystems in these places. So we're already running into trouble. Then there are other compounds that are used to make glass as well, different kinds of sand types or stones like limestones and other chemical compounds. And some of these minerals are actually mined. And we were talking a little bit about mining in the aluminium video. And every time we're talking about mining, it's sort of the same issue. It's really, really hard to mine anywhere without disturbing the nature around it, without disturbing the ecosystems and polluting the ecosystems, both physically, but also with noise pollution. So whenever mining is involved, it's never really Really a sustainable practice because it's really really hard to mine the amount of materials that we are mining with that being sustainable. There will always be a waste product and there will always be some kind of disruptive features in nature and in animals around this mining area. But when the ingredients for glass production has been gathered, limestone, minerals, silica, it's time to bake. The way we produce most glass today is in giant, giant furnaces. Furnaces that are super, super hot. Around 1,500 degrees Celsius to be exact. In order to fuel such a big furnace, you need a lot of energy. And this is another part of glass production that's really unsustainable. Because most furnaces today run on fossil fuels, aka oil. It's estimated that to make around one ton of glass, it emits around two tons of CO2. Then there's the notion of how furnaces are run in general, because furnaces actually cannot be turned off. Or I guess they can, but it doesn't really make any sense economically as well as sustainably. If you're thinking about your radiator at home, I think you've heard this before. I actually have a lot of times, I think my dad told me several times, but it actually requires more energy to turn it off and turn it back on and turn it off and turn it back on. And it requires less energy to just have it be on all the time. That is exactly what's happening in the glass production furnaces. It simply requires too many resources to turn it off and back on. So whenever it's on, it's on. A glass furnace usually runs for about 15 to 20 years before it has to be taken down and a new one has to be built. And as a result of that, you cannot really integrate any new sustainability technologies before you have to build a new one. So the glass production industry is always 15 years behind. So the environmental impact of glass production generally includes the use of fossil fuels, CO2 and SO2 emissions, water pollution, the use of non-renewable raw materials, the production of solid waste and emissions of volatile organic compounds, which is used in production of mirrors and coatings. 
So there's generally a lot of room for improvement when it comes to how glass is produced, but how do we use it every day? A lot of glass today is used as disposable everyday objects. We have a lot of packaging that is used in glass and that's something that most people, especially within the zero waste community, kind of favor. So we have glass as a disposable product, but we also use a lot of glass as a reusable product. Think about your glasses in your kitchen, think about windows, think about mirrors, there are a lot of stuff that we use many, 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 many times over that is also made from glass. So glass actually has a very important role to play in our everyday lives. As many other people in the zero waste sustainability community, I use glass for storage a lot. So instead of using plastic bags or plastic containers, I have big thrifted mason jars that I use to store food in instead. And the cool thing about using glass for food storage is that in contrast to plastic, it doesn't leak any chemicals into your food, it doesn't leave any scent or smells in the food, and it doesn't retain any sort of chemical compounds. Glass is completely non-toxic to use as food storage, and that's not something you can say for, for instance, plastic containers. We also have to discuss the notion of how glass is transported. Because whenever you make a material, whenever you produce something, you usually have to transport it quite a long way. And that's also the issue with glass. The bad thing with glass is that glass is rather fragile. Glass can easily break, which means that less glass can actually be transported at once. Glass is also significantly heavier than most other materials like aluminium and plastic. So glass actually emits more CO2 when being transported because less glass can be transported per truck. That means that in contrast to plastic and aluminium, glass has a larger transportation impact. Then there is recycling. We also have to take recycling into account whenever we're thinking about the overall impact of a certain product or a certain material. And this is really interesting. So before glass can become new glass, it has to be sorted into colors and quality. So for instance, dark colors of glass cannot be recycled into clear colors of glass. That's not how the glass production works. Instead, they have to be recycled into other products that require that same tone and nuance of glass. When glass has been collected and sorted out, it is ground into what we call colored. And colored are small, small itty pieces of glass that can then be melted into new glass. The cool thing about using collet instead of using new glass is that when the glass has already been made and ground into collet, it requires less energy and it requires less heat to melt again. So that's why generally recycled glass has a lower impact because it does not require the 1500 degrees Celsius to melt. It requires much, much, much less. Generally, recycling glass requires less resources overall. So using recycled glass will decrease the amount of air pollution with 20% and the amount of water pollution by 50%. So that's definitely something to take into account. When calculating energy, it takes one liter of gasoline to make one kilo of virgin glass. And adding 50% recycled glass will decrease gasoline use by 10%. And that's the same as removing 400,000 cars from the roads every single year. You can also say that for every six tons of glass, one ton of CO2 is avoided. The cool thing about glass as a recycling product is that it is endlessly recyclable and you can recycle it in a closed loop system. That means that you don't have to add new glass to your mix every time you're recycling glass. That's for instance the case with plastic. You have to add new plastic to your recycled plastic, otherwise the quality will start to degrade. But that does not happen with glass. However, not all glass is actually recycled. In the US, only 33% of glass is actually recycled, and in Europe, it's around 70%. Oftentimes, glass is not recycled, but it's downcycled instead. Glass is often ground into colored, which is then spread over landfills. I don't know why I'm doing this. Like, you know what spreading looks like. This is spreading. Cool. But glass colored is used as a landfill cover that sort of isolates the scents, and then you can put new garbage on top of that. And that's a really, really cheap way of doing it, but it's also a really, really unsustainable way of doing it. Because glass, when it's not recycled, is not able to decompose. And I'm saying it's not able at all because it takes and hold on to your horses, one million years for glass to decompose. Which is the same as saying that it just doesn't in the first place, because that's absolutely insane. And landfills are generally problematic because that landfills does not have any air for decomposition to begin in the first place. I read an article that said that a carrot in a landfill will take up to four years to break down. 
So generally kitchen scrubs takes a long, long time to do that because there isn't any air and without air there's no decomposition going on. And so the glass that you put in landfill will be there forever because it would take more than a million years for it to break down, which is definitely, definitely not sustainable. Also, some glass is actually not recyclable at all, which is also something to have in mind. Glass, for instance, that made to be oven proof, like Pyrex, is that what it's called? Glass that's oven proof is treated to withstand high temperatures, which means that it cannot comply with the recycling facilities that usually recycles glass. So either it will have to go to a different facility, but oftentimes it's simply just discarded as normal waste. Then there's also notions of glass with different coatings and some mirrors and windows and all this kind of stuff. Most of this just ends up in landfill. So when glass is recycled, there is definitely a lot of benefits to this material. However, not everyone recycles their glass and not everyone has the opportunity to recycle that glass. And that means that the glass we simply just toss in the bin and it goes to landfill or waste to energy incinerator plants comes with a very, very large impact. So how does a glass bottle hold up to a plastic bottle? Well, you have to take all the aspects into account. The production, the transportation, usage, disposal, recycling, all this kind of stuff. When we look at production, both these materials come with detrimental effects. Plastic is made as a byproduct from most fracking or drilling or natural gas extractions. All these industries are really, really damaging to the environment. They come with huge carbon footprints. They also come with massive greenhouse gas emissions, which are directly linked to climate change. On the other hand, glass is made from non-renewable materials, which we extract from nature and that nature cannot necessarily replace. So glass, although it is fully recyclable, makes up for around 5% of all garbage in the US and plastic makes up for around 20%. Glass has the largest footprint when it's made as a disposable product that is not recycled. There's nothing sustainable about that scenario. And in that scenario, it even has a larger footprint than plastic. Because plastic is rather light, you can transport a lot of it at the same time, which equals less emissions. It also does not take the same high temperatures to recycle, which is also less emissions than glass. However, because plastic is not endlessly recyclable, it becomes solid waste at one point or another. There's also the notion that plastic retains microplastic. So whenever you're using a product, whenever you're washing a product, if a product ends up in nature, it's going to retain microplastic forever, basically. Plastic, when it's decomposing, decomposing because it doesn't really decompose, but when it degrades in nature, it emits methane. Contrastingly, glass is recycled in a closed loop and it does not retain microplastics or micro glass. But no matter what you use in your everyday life, it's generally a good idea to phase out as many disposable products as you can. If you don't have any glass recycling, just tossing glass in the bin makes that packaging really, really impactful for the environment and generally in its production. And there's nothing sustainable about that. But you can say the same for plastic. So it's all about trying to phase out as many disposables as you possibly can. But for me, it's also about not letting my consumption of glass products become an indicator of more glass that needs to be produced, which is why I buy all my glass containers secondhand. Because when I do that, I'm not paying the industry itself to produce more stuff. My consumption of the glass products does not become a demand to make more products and to take more sand out of nature. And there is so much glass in thrift shops, you guys. At least there is here. And I hope you will go and see if you can find some for yourself. There's so many glass containers that you can use. A lot of them are even older than me. So it's just a win-win. I would rank glass higher than plastic in general, simply because the recycling rate is higher. The recycling continues in a closed loop with glass. It does not retain microplastics or micro glass. Okay. And it does not leak any chemicals or hormone disruptors into the food or into the people who are using it. So for these reasons, I would rank glass higher than plastic. However, if you live in an area where you don't have access to glass recycling, but you do have access to plastic recycling, then the plastic that you're recycling will be more sustainable than the glass you're tossing in the bin. But if you're using the glass containers continuously at home, then the reused glass will be more sustainable than the, than the plastic you're recycling. Do you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> it's not necessarily a black and white answer and it depends on a lot of different things, but I do think that for me at least, the most important thing is that I take into account how much is generally recycled. Or no, how much is realistically in my region, in my country, my city, how much is recycled? How low will the impact be of this product that I am using? 
Plastic in the US is only recycled about 9% of the times and on the global scale is 12 to 15%, whilst glass is significantly higher. So in a lot of cases, glass will actually be more sustainable because you're able to recycle it and also because you're able to reuse it. I know you can, of course, also reuse plastic containers and I do that as well. If I accidentally get one, I have one, I will reuse the plastic containers until they die, which is always what you should be doing if you have that option. But at one point or another, a plastic container is going to degrade or simply be too weird and the lid does not close anymore and it will at one point end up being waste. Whereas that is not necessarily the fate that glass will face in the end. So that's something to take into account. Generally, I rate glass higher than plastic because of all these factors and because of the options I have for recycling and reusing it. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up or leave me a comment and telling me how you reuse old containers, plastic, glass, aluminium or whatever. I would love to know if you have any cool hacks. So let me know how you reuse old containers rather than tossing them in the bin. And also remember to uh, subscribe to this channel and give a girl some love. I mean, okay. I hope that you like this video. I hope to see you guys in my next one as well. Take really, really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video. And also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents. And I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below. And the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.